we're looking at the full bridge inverter, but this time with real switches instead of ideal switches. So instead of the ideal switches, we've added in MOSFETs. And remember, each of them has a body diode. And we're going to say that the body diode, when it's on, it will have this polarity. And we're going to call that DF for the forward. And it's going to be all the same for all of those. Remember that we have to switch these switches in a complementary fashion. But because switches take time to turn on and off, we need to add some dead time. So before we looked at four different switching states, and they're redrawn here. The first switching state gives VDC at the output, zero, negative VDC, and then zero. But then as you transition between each of those, you're going to need some dead time. So this in between each of these is the dead time. And we're going to go through each of those and explain what we would see at the output during the dead time. Let's start with the first transition. So here we're actually going, and this is a good visualization as well. We have Q1, we're leaving the first switch on, but we're switching two off and turning on three. So two and three are here. So we need to add some dead time in between them. So in between, the first one is on, and the rest are going to be off. And the voltage that we're going to see over the load depends on the current flow. This is where it's going to get a little bit complicated. So here is our current direction flowing in this direction. And if we assume that during the dead time, so Q1 is on, Q1 is on, but current is flowing in this direction, then current has to flow through this body diode. It can't through the, flow through this one because it's blocked. It has to flow through this body diode. And so it's going to go through here in this path, but we're going to see the voltage drop of this diode. We're going to draw two values here. It's either going to be if the current's going in the right direction with the arrow or against the arrow. So let's assume if it's going this direction, then we know it's going to be, we're just going to see this voltage from the forward drop. And looking at the polarity, it's going to be a negative forward drop. So V negative forward. Or, we'll put an or, if it's actually going in the other direction, remember Q on is, Q1 is the only one that's on. If it's going in that direction, then it's going to pull the current through here in this direction and go around like this. In that case, we're going to get the voltage drop from this as well. So we'll get the full voltage of the VDC. Then we're also going to add on to that this voltage here. So it's actually going to end up being VDC plus VF. Now let's go to the next step. We transition from the second state to the third one. And this time Q3 is going to be maintained on, stay on throughout this transition. But Q1 is going to turn off and Q4 is going to turn on. So going from here to here. So if Q3 is on, then Q3 is on here. Let's look at the current if it's going to the right following the arrow. This is already turned on. So in order for current to flow this way, it has to come through this body diode. Again, we're going to look at some voltage here. So it's going to flow through our whole VDC, and it's going to add on this voltage as well. So we're going to get the negative VDC and then minus the VF. So it's going to be negative VDC minus the drop of the diode. Or, if it's going in the opposite direction, let's do the opposite case, current is going in this direction and Q3 is on. So Q3 is on, current is going in this direction, we just follow the arrows. Can't go this way, it's blocked, so we have to go up this way. So that means current's going to flow in this direction through here, and the only voltage we're going to see over our load is the drop of the diode. 
And if you look at the polarities, this time it's going to be positive. So this is going to be VF positive. Let's just go step by step through all of these. Now we're transitioning from the third step to the fourth step. And here you notice that Q4 is maintained on. So during this dead time, only Q4 is on. That's this one. And now let's look at where the current will flow based on that. So if we're first assume current from left to right in the direction with the arrow, current will come up through here and go through Q3 and come back around this way. If we look at those voltages, we're going to get the negative VDC minus the drop of the diode again. So we're going to get negative VDC minus VF. Sorry for my bad, bad handwriting. Or, let's look at the opposite case again. If the current is going in the opposite direction, negative through the load, but Q4 is on, then we're going to get current coming through this body diode here, this way, and we're going to see just the drop of the diode here, and it's going to be a positive VF. Okay, last case. This one we're going from the fourth state and then actually coming back around to the first state. So number two, switch number two will be on, during this dead time, and the rest will be off. So number two is on here. So this is on, and we're going to first assume current is going in this direction. Then we know that current will have to flow through this body diode and back around. Then we get just the negative of the forward voltage of the diode. So negative VF here. Or, again, the opposite case. Let's take the opposite current case, Q2 is on and is going in this direction. That means it's going to go up through this body diode of Q1, up and around and come this way. So if we look at the polarities of the VDC and the forward voltage drop of the diode, we'll see that they would add together. So we would get VDC plus VF. Now let's take the table that we made and apply it to the switching and the voltage diagram. And we're going to assume that we're, the current is flowing from left to right here with the arrow, which means we only have to look at the left side of our dead time graphs. So once you have this chart, all you really do is follow the switching periods. Here the dead time is shown in the yellow, in between the yellow bars. And all I have to do is fill in the value that's going to be in those. So first we had our first switching state and VDC is positive. Then we have our negative VF. So just a little bit, little bit negative here. And then it's going to go actually back up to zero. Let's just draw this so that I can show you exactly. So only Q1 is on. So current's going to go through here. This is the current path. Our current's going to go through this because we're going in this direction. And the only way that it can go is through this body diode here. So that would be our first dead time here. Okay, then we go to this next state and we know that the output voltage is zero. We've already drawn that. Now we want to transition from the second to this third and we have to go through the dead time again. We know based on the direction we're going to get a negative VDC minus VF. So we're going to get negative VDC which is down here and get a little bit more negative than that, and then come back up. Okay, let's just draw that on our diagram here. So Q3 is on, so we're going to get through the switch of Q3. Again, we're going through here, and because we're going in this direction, we have to pull current from this through here, through this body diode, and then come all the way back around this way. Okay, so that's how we get this voltage here. Then we're going to go from our third state to our fourth state. And we know, because we already calculated it, it's also going to be negative VDC minus VF. So we're just going to draw that in here. Just going to be a little bit lower than that. 
and then it's going to go to our next state, which is zero. So let's just draw that. This case, only Q4 is on. So we're going through the switch here, this is actively on, through the load in this direction, again, going this way. And we have to go again through here, through the body diode of Q3, and then we come all the way back around here to get the negative VDC minus this BF. Now we transition from the fourth back to the first state, and we've already drawn our diagram, so we know it's going to be a negative VF. So during this dead time, we're just going to get a little bit of negative VF here, and then we'll go up to our next state, which would be VDC. On the diagram, we have Q2 is on, so we're going through the main switch of Q2. We're going through the load this way, and we have to go through this body diode here, and then come back around this way. So here, this body diode voltage is seen over the load. When we use real switches in a full bridge inverter, we need to make sure that we add a little bit of dead time between the switches of each of the legs of the full bridge. During the dead time, it's going to be a slightly different voltage over the load, and that voltage depends on the direction of the current in the load. There is going to be a small effect of the forward voltage of the body diode of these MOSFETs, but generally our VDC is going to be quite high, and a lot of times this VF is relatively much smaller, so it can often be completely ignored. We've derived everything, so it's listed here, and you can see that it has a small effect on the output. Note that this dead time is going to be much smaller than it's shown here, but we just showed it a little bit larger so you can get the concept.